Every good gardener will always check the garden to remove the weeds that try to grow with the plants because the weeds will affect the life and growth of the plants in the garden. In Matthew chapter 15 verse 13, it says, Every plant that my heavenly father did not plant will be pulled up and sat Jesus. This is a very popular scripture that has been used and it's the inspiration for today's video that God will remove or uproot everything that did not plant in your life. Now, there are so many applications that have been given to this scripture generally. And if you are a Christian and have been to church, you might have heard this scripture quoted many times in times of prayer, especially the warfare prayer, where they will say, pray to God, everything that you do not plant in my life, remove it, uproot it. But in today's video, I want to look at this from the viewpoint of an agricultural garden, which are unwanted plants. And if God will remove any plants that he did not plant. It means that plants can be said to be weak. And in our life, we can see that there are things that act as weeds, which try to defile us. It tries to corrupt and contaminate us and pollute our lives. And with this, that can hinder our spiritual growth, our financial growth. So in order to give you value in this video, I have laid out three points for us to consider together how God will remove or uproot the things he did not plant in our lives. In brackets, you can say the weeds in our life. Point one, identify what God did not plant in your life. If you cannot identify what the weeds are amongst the plants, you might mistakenly uproot the plants and leave the weeds to survive. So a gardener always knows what he plants. And that's why it's important for you and I as Christians that if you want God to remove what he did not plant in our lives, we have to work with him to identify what is this thing that God did not plant. And from this scripture which Jesus said, every plant that my heavenly father did not plant will be uprooted. We go about it in prayers telling God, remove this thing from my life because I don't like it. It's inconveniencing me. It's taking away my comfort. And God really wants to remove everything that is bothering you. But the truth is, first of all, God wants to remove the things that he himself does not like in your life. The things that are defiling you and trying to contaminate you such that you will not be able to live up to the purpose that God has called you to. Jesus said the things that defile is not what you eat. It's actually what comes out of you, which is a product of your thoughts. And in that Matthew chapter 15 verse 19, it says, For from your heart come evil ideas, which will lead you to kill, commit adultery, and do other immoral things, to rob, lie, and slander others. This is very plain. The things that God wants to remove in our life are first of all the things that affect us directly from the roots. The things that has to do with our soul. We are always in a work of progression. Paul said, I have not yet arrived. I am on a journey. Every day I want to attain that which Christ has taken hold of me. So God wants to first of all push the impurities inside of you. He said, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So first of all, the identifying of the things that are weak in your life are the impurities that try to dent your soul, contaminate your heart, the habits, the attitudes and the characters that are not in line with God's will, that God did not plant, that God does not like. And the truth is, once you are able to identify the way, God will help you uproot it. It could be about your perception of God. If you have a bad perception of God, you don't know that God has your best interest at heart. That's a weed. God did not plant that. It is religion or maybe what you hear about God, which was a poor representation of God that gave you that perception that God is a hard God that wants to come after you. No, God doesn't want to come after you. He wants to help you. God wants to remove from the roots those things that have not been transformed about you. The wrong companionship, the wrong associations, the suicidal thoughts, the depression, and every other thing. They are not planted by God. The wrong habits, the addictions. Number two, partner with the Lord Jesus Christ to uproot those things God did not plant in you. If you have been able to identify the things that are weak in your life, the things that are defiling you, that are corrupting you, that are trying to contaminate you and all the things that are pollutions to your life, it's only Jesus that can help you. Your willpower cannot do anything. Your willpower can only help you manage your addictions. It cannot save you from your addictions. Only Jesus can save you. I struggled with masturbation for some years and this will be a testimony that I will share in another video. And I thought that by my willpower, when I want to stop it, I will stop it. Like some people say, maybe they are smokers and they are doing some things 
that are actually defiling and corrupting them. And if you like, when I'm ready, I will stop. If I want to stop it, I will stop. This promiscuous lifestyle, if I want to stop it, I will stop. I'm just doing it. And God's work is to transform you from the inside out. And the only way that transformation can come to you is when you partner with Jesus. Because it says, without me, you can do nothing. So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. And this is where you have to know that your willpower cannot save you. You are powerless without Christ Jesus. That is why you need to partner with him for God to uproot the things in your life that was not planted by him. Because your union with Christ Jesus will break the mold of all the evil patterns that has been a part of you. It takes him alone for those molds to be broken. My third and last point is identify your identity. This is the most important part of this video. And I hope that it blesses you. By the time you do not know your identity, you are bound to have a wrong perception of yourself. You can only identify what you know. And as a Christian, it is very important for you to identify your true identity. Because a wrong perception of you will hold you hostage and hinder you from harnessing your greatest potential in life and becoming all that God has called you to become. So if you want to fulfill your God-given destiny, you need to identify your true identity. Now, let me remind you of your identity. Fear is not your identity. God did not plant fear in you. Scripture says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So, by the time you allow fear to become the decision maker in your life, you would even be afraid to go to God. You'll be afraid in life. You'll be afraid of death. And Jesus said, I have not given you that spirit. My father did not plant that fear in you. If you're struggling with depression, that is not your identity. Anxiety is not your identity. God did not plant it there. That is why he wants to uproot it. If you're struggling with any kind of addiction, you are not an addict. That is not your identity. Your true identity is in Christ. You are not a slave to sin. You are freedom. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Paul Apostle in Romans chapter 7 expressed widely how you are no longer a slave to sin. He said, and I know that nothing good lives in me, that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. And that's kind of like the life we find ourselves in one place or the other living. Somehow you're struggling with doing what is right. You're struggling with doing what is good. But the thing you don't want to do, that's where you find yourself. And he continued and said, I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. But have you seen how that paints a clear picture of what you might be going through? Now, what's the solution? He continued, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, you are no longer a slave to sin. You were once a slave to sin. You were once bound in darkness. You are now in the light. That's your new identity. You are no longer in the system of the old in the system of death, in the system of submission to the will of your flesh. You are no longer under that rule. You are now a new creature. Identify your identity in Christ Jesus. He is the answer for sin shall no longer have dominion over you because you are no longer under the law but under grace. But the fact is a lot of Christians are still living under the law. They think they can keep the law. They think they can measure up. I was once there until I knew God's grace and experienced the freedom from my sins, the freedom from my addictions. It took knowing the grace of Christ. It took knowing Jesus for who he is. He is the person of grace. And another identity I want to remind you of is that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You can read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 of that, that Christ became your sin so that you can become his righteousness. God did not plant the trauma that you've been through or you are going through right now, nor the effect of what it's doing to you or what it has done to you. God did not plant the bad relationships around you. Now, because you've come to identify your identity in Christ and get acquainted to him, you have authority and you can speak to the evils around you. They will leave. God did not plant the sickness in your body. And in fact, sickness cannot even have a part in your body. The Bible says Jesus took our infirmities 
and our diseases and our sicknesses on his own self. What was the cross for? What was the stripes for? Scripture says by stripes we are healed. So would you receive this with your whole heart and allow it to transform your life and how you see life? Sorry, the light just went out, but the light going out cannot make me stop this recording. You are not a failure. You are born to win. You are not whatsoever level you've been given in life. Your identity is in Christ. And I hope this video is beneficial to you. You've learned something. You've gotten value from it. And you know that whatever was not planted by God in your life is a weed which God will remove. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Uwe McMahon. This is my YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it to others for them to see. And I hope to see you in my next YouTube video. Thank you. God bless you.